Thanks to 41 Northco for supporting the series. Hey there, welcome to the beach. It's very bright and a bit windy, but that's Lake Superior in July for you. <laughs> the first time I ever came up to Michigan's Upper Peninsula in Lake Superior, I was delighted at how many good rocks you can find on the beach. And shortly after I moved up here, I learned that one of the coolest rocks of them all is this. If you hit this thing with the right kind of UV flashlight, similar to the black lights you might find at your local laser tag place, you get something amazing. These rocks go by many names. Glodalite, Emberlite, Uperstones, or the trademarked Uperlite when they're being sold by a certain business. But what most places won't tell you is where they came from. It's a story that goes back more than a billion years. And if you know what to look for and whom to talk to, you can find patterns in these rocks that suggest there's even more to understand. Now, these definitely aren't the only glowing rocks. If you visit a natural history museum, you'll probably find an entire case full. But for these rocks in particular, my first big question wasn't how unique are they, it was why do they glow? The different minerals that make up a rock can glow in different ways, but the summary for how this works is that the mineral absorbs one color or one kind of light and releases a different color of light that has less energy. So these rocks contain a version of the mineral sodalite that's fluorescent. The sodalite absorbs higher energy ultraviolet light from this flashlight and emits lower energy yellowy orange light. I'll actually call this stuff sodalite or fluorescent sodalite for the rest of this video to keep things simple, but know that there are other minerals in here as well. But why does this light transformation happen? Well, if you could zoom way into a rock, you'd see that it's all about electrons, one of the pieces that makes up an atom. When UV light hits these electrons, it bumps them up to a higher energy level, like me drinking coffee while working on this animation. But also like me drinking coffee, that energized state is unstable and doesn't last very long. So the electrons almost immediately fall back down to a lower energy level. And along the way, they release whatever extra energy they have left over in the form of light. Fluorescence doesn't last very long, so the glow is gone virtually as soon as you take the light away. This makes fluorescent soda light different from something like glow-in-the-dark stars, which are phosphorescent and release their light more slowly. Now, fluorescent sodalite isn't just found in Michigan's Upper Peninsula, despite what names like Uperstone suggest. This kind of nickname just got popular when someone found fluorescent sodalite here and started selling it under a brand name. Oh, for context, Uper, U P er, someone who lives in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. Stones like these can be found all over the world, but because of their origin story, and more on that in a minute, if you want to find one in Michigan, they are easier to find on the rocky beaches around Lake Superior. At least, if you know what you're doing. A while back, I wanted to give sodalite hunting a try without investing a bunch of money in a hobby I wasn't sure I'd like. So I got a cheap UV pen light on the internet and poked around a beach with exactly zero success. I had a suspicion that both my technique and my equipment were terrible. In any case, for this video, I had the good fortune to be connecting with someone who is a pro at this. I looked for four months um, in the woods, in farm fields, and I was successful every time. And I got it, but it was like, it started out as one in 10. I'd find one rock mm -hmm. at a 10 that was fluorescent, but then towards the end, it was more like nine out of 10 because I developed different ways of doing it. Meet John Dean. He's been looking for fluorescent soda lights ever since he found some in Southwest Michigan, far from Lake Superior. And he's been a huge part of the soda light hunting community ever since even making these gorgeous statues out of the rocks he finds. You almost get an adrenaline rush, <laughs> and you're gonna find that out. Yeah. So it, it is, it's about the hunt, it's about the community, lots of stories of stuff that happens on the beaches during hunts. One of the best things is running into somebody that doesn't have that experience yet. This is their first time you run into them on the beach. You get to explain to them, you give them a rock, you know, you mm -hmm. just, that, smile on their face and that's Aww. what makes it, yes, that's what makes it yeah. the best. The cool thing about Sodalite though is that it's not just an opportunity to connect with other people, it's also an opportunity to cross paths with a billion year story because these rocks are about a billion years old. This thing is older than the first animal on earth and I'm just holding it in my silly little video studio on my little video couch. 
What a world! In the series, an event that keeps coming up is the Mid-Continent Rift. It happened about 1.1 billion years ago, when what's now North America started to split apart and then stopped. And along the way, tons of magma rose up from underground and flooded the surface as lava. As part of this event, one pocket of magma in what's now Ontario got trapped under the surface. Stuck underground, it cooled slowly, and some of it solidified into a type of rock called cyanite that's similar to granite. That cyanite contained the mineral sodalite. That sodalite contained impurities, specifically a type of sulfur, and the sulfur in the sodalite crystals is what makes them fluorescent. This body of rock is called the Coldwell Alkaline Complex, and it's likely where the fluorescent sodalite in the Lake Superior region comes from. As the rock above it eroded, this complex ended up at the surface, and roughly 10,000 years ago, glaciers scraped it up and dragged some of this sodalite sap where you can now find it on rocky beaches made of many similarly ancient stones. You can also find this stuff inland or on sandy beaches, but it does tend to be less obvious. But in any case, the Coldwell Alkaline Complex is not the only origin of this stuff. Like I mentioned earlier, fluorescent sodalite has been found around the world. But here in North America, John has noticed something interesting about the sodalite. If you pick up enough random pieces on the beach, you might start to notice patterns. You, when we were chatting a few minutes ago, you said at some point you have your thousands of, of pieces. Yes. And you separated them out and found patterns. Yes. Tell me more. It took me at least two weeks to go through thousands of stones before I figured out. And a pattern is repetitive, you know. A lot of people come up with a stone, well, what about this one? What pattern is this one? Well, how many of those do you got? But these are the most repetitive. Okay. And the soda flake, mm -hmm is actually the most common pattern that there is. Okay. Probably the next most common is gonna be the soda pepper. We have the Zodiacs, soda crush, then the cosmic sodas, then the heavy soda, and then we have just what we call jemmy. And then the psychedelic is where you're gonna have like more than three different patterns of any of these combined together, then it just goes to a psychedelic. What, so far as you know, do the patterns tell us about the geology of the stones and things like that? You've hit on the part that if I could know anything more about these stones, it would be that. To me, what I need would be to go up to an area of different elevations, like up to the Caldwell Complex, and be able to see whether it had to do with the cooling and the rapidness of the cooling, or was it heat, or was it formed from pressure, why these things were formed the way they were. Yeah. That is the biggest mystery in my mind right now, and I can pick up a rock and look at it and gaze at this thing for weeks on end, just going through my head imagining what happened to form this, and uh -huh. you know. So there's another question for another day. And of course, when it came to information about finding sodalite, John was also a great source of wisdom. If you were to put together like a basic equipment list of like, if you want to have a good time, do not forget these things. What's on your list? Right. Naturally, you're going to need a light. I don't want to push my lights at all on anybody. If you go on Amazon, uh, there's decent deals on lights. Then the safety factor in it um, is you need safety glasses, um, which are any type of polycarbonate lenses. And that's so you're not getting UV light straight in directly your in your eyes. Yeah. That's the most important thing, that safety aspect. Now, if you go to a beach that you're unfamiliar with, isn't a public beach that might say have bathrooms with lights and you wanna take, what we do is take glow sticks and when you get down to your entrance, you'll break a glow stick, find yourself a branch or something like that to tie it to, oh. so that when you're coming back, you're gonna see it and you're gonna see your exit. Because believe me, if you've never been on the beach, that beach before, mm -hmm. you could end up on that beach for the rest of your life. Then it's a personal preference on what you wanna carry your rocks in. Do you wanna carry a bucket, a backpack? I use a scoop and it helps steady me in the water mm -hmm. if I'm walking in the water or anything, but then also helps you get the rocks out of the water or even just pick them up if you know you don't want to bend down. Well, thanks, John. Well, thank you. This was great. <laughs> Shall we go to the beach? Yes, let's do yes. it. <laughs> and I will say, we had a great time. I'd say I redeemed my earlier attempts to look for sodalite, but honestly, 
My initial effort was so bad, I don't even think it makes the rankings. We went out to a stretch of land on Lake Superior, owned by one of Don's friends, and hung out and shared stories and watched a beautiful sunset, and I discovered the magic of trudging through a freezing cold lake wearing waders. And when the sun finally went down, oh boy, did we ever find so delight. Oh! <laughs> Hello. That's so cool. Check it out. So does this count as a soda pepper? Or is yeah, it? Yeah, it actually looks like it. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> this is so great. Yeah, that's a nice one right there. Whoa. Wow. I also learned that plenty of other things fluoresce under an ultraviolet light, including algae. Ultimately, I love learning stories where Earth's ancient history crosses paths with modern human communities, and this one was no exception. In a deeply corny but truly authentic way, it also reminded me that nearly everything on Earth can be interesting, if you just look at it under the right light. Besides being fascinated by geology, something to know about me is that I am also a sucker for a small local business and for fun apparel, which is why I am delighted that 41 North Co. is the sponsor for this video. They're a lifestyle apparel brand, printing and designing high quality shirts, hoodies, and more in Michigan's Keweenaw Peninsula, where I went rock hunting with John. Much like me, they are fascinated by the beauty, history, and culture in this area, and their mission is inspiring people to get outside and explore the world around them. I really like this quote that Matthew at the company sent me when we were talking about this, so I'm just gonna read it. Whether you live in the Keweenaw, visit often, or are dreaming of a trip, 41 North Co. wants you to have a high quality keepsake you're proud to wear and pass on to future generations of explorers. I love it. That's my jam. You can learn more about 41 North Co. by following them on Instagram and Facebook, and you can head over to 41NorthCo.com to pick up this shirt or any of their other designs. Thanks as always for being here and for considering supporting sponsors who support this series. I hope you learned something that makes you think about the world just a little differently, and me and my billion-year-old rock. We'll see you soon.